I don't know, I haven't, I haven't used Google Meet for this before. Um, I feel like I've been in Zoom for about, I don't know, a year and a half nonstop. Um, anyway, so I thought I might just give a, um, a quick um, intro to something that we've been working on now for a while. Um, I guess if you include procurement time, um, but that's, I guess, really just um, getting into some of the interesting parts now. Um, and we've been working with um, partnering with Stack HPC amongst other vendors. Um, but Stack HPC, uh, obviously, specifically on the OpenStack side of things here. Um, so we're building a new um, cloud native platform for Nessie. Nessie's the New Zealand e-science infrastructure for people who haven't heard me talk about it before, where I where I work now. Um, and Nessie's a collaboration in New Zealand amongst um, a couple of the research intensive universities and the Crown Research Institutes, which are basically the government science organizations. Um, there's a handful of them couple of those are direct collaborators with Nessie, um, a bunch of others are subscribers, and we've got some new partnerships that I'll talk about here um, from that part of the sector too. Um, oh yeah, lots of, this is, this is, I'm just recycling slides from a different talk. Um, so I don't know that this, how, how well this hangs together. Um, but basically this is a, um, a, an OpenStack private cloud with high performance tendencies. Um, we are, um, it's KOB deployed, um, and of course we are working with um, Stig and, and his crew on on that side of things. Um, once the, the cloud itself is up and running, um, we're planning to support a bunch of different use cases, but one of those is um, the uh, a Slim appliance um, style tenancy. Um, Probably the next, um, we've got a bunch of our own internal use cases. Um, our present supercomputing and HPC infrastructure um, it doesn't really support any multi-tenancy. Um, and that has been frustrating our developments in, in a few different areas, in particular um, sort of data services um, and other things where we want to use, be using cloud native tech like Kubernetes and another and just you know sort of standard CI CD um, based um, development pipelines that uh, don't fit very well into a uh, more monolithic HPC environment. Um, we're all aware of these challenges and motivations towards cloud, um, but we also want to explore, I guess the the next stage of what our capacity HPC might look like. Um, and whether a, a cloud native approach to that is is suitable. Um, so, sort of continuing continuing the, the theme that other people have have looked at within the within the SIG and and that um, I was working on at Monash. Um, so, from a New Zealand um, uh, context perspective, um, we've got. A couple, one organization already, University of Auckland, which um, is one of the Nessie partners that is part of the Nectar Research Cloud uh, that is that came from Australia. Um, and there's potentially one or two other, well, one or two others that have been interested over time in getting involved in that community cloud as well. Um, Nessie's at this point not planning to go into into that area of service, into a VMs for all sort of direct researcher cons uh, consumes infrastructure as a service. Um, we're looking more at managed services, virtual labs, platforms, that, that sort of stuff where we where there's value add that we can provide. Um, we're hoping that this platform and the and the general architecture uh, around the, the technology will address some equity issues in the sector that smaller groups and institutions um, have and and help with specifically, I guess, collaboration, national collaborations. Uh, and we're going for a bespoke architecture, in particular with some um, direct integration with our local NREN, RIANs, 
so that we can do um, a, a direct campus integrations from this environment. Um, so, and this sort of um, layer cake diagram of um, of the architecture gives a gives a flavour of this. Um, there's we just have the concept of um, in the green box uh, are the sort of the main set of services and and so on that um, that users might be able to consume. So say if we if we took for example a user being a maybe a Nessie developer or a um, a, a DevOps a, a research software engineer um, working for maybe the Antarctic Science Platform or something like this, one of our, our national collaborations that are going on at the moment, um, then they would be able to consume things like Magnum um, from the cloud in, in a typical um, on-demand manner using capacity that, that Nessie's already invested in and purchased through our, our procurement. Um, and we have, Nessie has models around um, the entitlements for resources we have a merit scheme uh we allow subscription and these sorts of things as well um but we'll also have we also have a model for direct hardware tenancies so expanding the environment um to have dedicated infrastructure and doing that that deeper integration and in some cases that's that's not necessarily going to be open stack services that will be some level of network integration uh that's specific to certain tenant or tenants in the environment um and so one of those that we've been working on um very intensively over the past few months is a new partnership with ag research ag research is one of our cris in the sector here um that is as the name sounds um they're an ag agricultural and pastoral agri-food agri-tech um science organization uh, and they they had a need. Essentially, they've got a new science plan that's um, quite technology intensive, and their present internal data and computer infrastructure is is not up to scratch and, and basically won't scale. It's it's creaking, um, and they were about to go out and purchase a solution um, maybe at the start of this year uh, from HPE um with with some other um sort of i guess um commercial technology providers um within that that partnership as well um and at the time the government had just released a review into into the sector and called for greater collaboration around shared assets in particular um asset intensive or, sorry uh, infrastructure intensive stuff um and so they they came came to us and we were just working on on this platform and sort of we'd, we'd just um i think we were just finishing up our procurement activities um around the initial build and so we we're starting to build a picture of what what this was going to be and asked whether we could integrate their environment and do something that was um broader than just uh what ag research needed um and so we spent a bit of time reworking some elements of the architecture that that HBE had had proposed to them initially um, to integrate it into this new private cloud environment. Um, and so this is a sort of bit of a, a component diagram showing how that works. Um, they'll have um, it's a very their, their needs are very data intensive, of course, um, and so. There's, um, you'll notice there's a bunch of stuff outside of the, the Flexi HPC um, boxes. So there's DMF um, and that's got a bunch of storage that's sort of direct DMF stuff, zero watt tape library. Um, there's also a third copy of all data in a, in a separate Ceph cluster at another site. Um, and in the Flexi environment, they'll have a bunch of bare metal nodes uh, some hypervisor capacity and some extra um, or flash CIF. They also scale out our network um, and have their own direct 
WAN connectivity through RANs. So they'll have, for example, a GPFS primary file system that have that has protocol nodes within this environment facing uh, clients in Palmerston North and Lincoln around the country and allowing them to do, you know, their have their nice SIFS shares on, on their Windows desktops and users able to log in directly to the login nodes and so on in the in the Sloan cluster on Flexi HPC. Um, and that's probably about all that's interesting to talk about here at the moment without going into start starting to get into excruciating technical detail. So I might just stop there and see if there's any questions. Um, I, uh, that's, uh, that's